Hey everyone, this is Tony LeBron. Welcome to Uplifting People, the program that features amazing individuals whose lives are uplifting to men and women everywhere. Today's program features Brian Bird, a 30-year film and TV veteran who is a writer, producer, and media professional. Brian is co-founder and partner with Michael Landon Jr. of Believe Pictures and is also writer and producer of films such as The Case for Christ, Captive, and The Ultimate Life. Brian is the executive producer and co-creator of the Hallmark original series, When Calls the Heart. Earlier in his career, Brian served as co-executive producer and writer on the final five seasons of Touched by an Angel. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Tony. Great to be with you. Absolutely. So glad to have you. First of all, congratulations on your incredible success, When Calls the Heart. It's Thank just you. been an amazing success for a Hallmark Channel. But let's go back to the beginning, the early years. Mm. Um, what inspired you to, to be a part of media? Well, you know, I was uh, a pastor's son. I was, okay. uh, my grandfather was also a pastor. I was sort of raised in the, the church. But when my uh, dad left the pastorate, he became a DJ. And so I grew up with both this sense of like media and ministry mm -hmm. in, in my blood. And uh, when I was a freshman in high school, I had an English teacher, Mrs. Right. Stevens, who yes. held me after class. And I thought, wow, what did I do? I'm busted. All my friends were walking out of the class, giving me these looks of pity like you're in trouble. Yeah. And uh, she had an essay on her desk that I had written, mm -hmm. and it had an A-plus on it. But she said, that's not the most important thing I want to, want to say to you. She looked me right in the eye, and she said, you could do this for a living if wow. you want to. And I, w I was just an average kid. Yes. I, you know, the writing just came a little easier for me mm -hmm. than maybe some of the other things. Uh, it was all hard. But I had something in me, and she lit a little, little fire under me. And she dogged me all the way the rest, rest of the way through high school. She got me to go to journalism school. Wow. So I really learned how to write because that adult champion spoke into my life. It's amazing. You still remember her name. Yes. <laughs> you still remember that moment and, yes. um, when she spoke into your life. You also told me that your mom, she gave you something when you were a child. Yeah, you know, um, I don't actually remember making this, but uh -huh. you know, we all have these boxes of our memorabilia that our parents keep for us. Right. And, and she presented me with a picture that I had, I had drawn and, mm -hmm. and written um, that showed, pic it, had, it, had, it was drawings of TV cameras, mm -hmm. right? And it had a caption underneath it said, when I get older, I'm going to make movies and TV shows. Wow. And I think I was seven years old when mm -hmm. I wrote that. So I believe in destiny. Absolutely. I believe that God sort of ordains these things in us. He, he has given us a tiny little strand of his creative DNA, the yes. author of the universe. And um, it's the only thing I know how to do. Mm -hmm. I keep showing up and trying to do my best work. I would be wandering around mumbling to myself if I didn't know how to do <laughs> this work. Yes. Um, but you know what? I, I do believe it's what I'm supposed to do. Mm. It's sort of my calling. It's my mission in life. And so I just keep showing up. Absolutely. It's amazing how God, even from when you were a child, he was speaking your destiny and preparing you. Right. Um, Mentors and very important in your life. Are you? Um, how do you mentor now? How do you help others that want well, to be a part I, of media? Yeah, beyond Mrs. Stevens, I, there were a couple of others who spoke into my mm -hmm. life as well. My uh, my my uncle, my my uncle Dan, mm -hmm. my father's younger brother, is a classically trained musician. He's okay. a worship leader, old school guy, and he he took me aside when I was getting out of high school and I was about to go to journalism school, and he said. This writing skill that you have is like an instrument mm. that God has given you to play. Don't just get good enough to be in a garage band. Get good enough to be in the symphony. He, he dangled this carrot of excellence in front of me. And then my wife's great uncle was a TV writer, producer, okay. and he, he introduced me to sort of the world of, of TV and film. Don Engels is his name. Mm -hmm. And he, he said, I, I will leave the door open for you, but your talent has to keep it open. That's good. And he said, somebody left the door open for me, and so I'm making you promise, and I'm going to leave the door open for you, but mm -hmm. I'm making you promise to leave the door open for others. And so the, 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 the idea, the practice of mentorship mm -hmm. of younger people, mm -hmm. cloning our values and our skills yes. in younger people, 
uh, is something I deeply believe in. And so I've tried my whole career now mm -hmm. for 30 years of speaking into the lives of, of younger writers. And amazing, producers. amazing. Faith in Christ, how did, um, you grew up as a pastor's kid? Yeah, so I grew up in church and, and uh, I found Jesus as my savior when I was a little kid, like yeah. seven years old, right? Right around that, 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 that time that I was starting to think about what I should be in, in life. And uh, mm -hmm. I was just a kid who grew up in church, but I, but I believed and then I reaffirmed my faith in journalism school, actually. I went to okay. secular journalism school. Uh, but I had a, uh, a professor who was a believer, right. a journalism professor, and he said, in the marketplace of ideas, truth always rises to the top. So as a Christian, mm -hmm. you don't have to be afraid of untruth. You don't have to be afraid of other ideas right. because truth will always emerge. That's good. Right? And so it was a really great lesson for me not to feel like I, ha I, I would be estranged in my own world of, mm -hmm. of work mm -hmm. as someone of faith. Right. And so I've just attempted in my whole life to live out my faith, but do excellent work. That's been my go-to principle you know, in my, That's in my so career. Good. The, the importance of excellent, be right. excellence, being excellent. That's right. Sometimes we as Christians, like you said, we feel like, oh, maybe they're going to say something, they're going to judge us because we're Christians, but truth rises to the top and being excellent in everything you do. We, we, need to, we need to love on people, right. no matter what, mm -hmm. unconditionally, yes. right, for their whole lives. Uh, and, and, you know, uh, I, this is how I believe God wants me to operate mm -hmm. in my professional work life love on people, and then I'll do the rest. He'll do the rest. That's it. Right? I, I'm not him. Yes. But if I love people, I open a door for him to convict, to him for, for him to come in and define himself for those, those folks. And always be ready, uh, have a ready answer mm -hmm. for what I believe for sure. Uh, when people want to know what I believe, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not shy about talking about right. what I believe. But my first MO is friendship. Right. So good. Because it's a business full of betrayal. Mm -hmm. As you know, yeah. working in this business, yep. it's a business full of rejection and betrayal and, 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 and failure. Yes. Right. And so people are hungry for friendship. Mm -hmm. Authentic friends mm -hmm. are, are gold. That's so good. Totally gold. Cool. You know, that's the example that Christ gave us. He was a friend of sinners. Right. <laughs> I love, um, I heard a pastor once say that he loved Judas till the end. That's right. Right. He just loved and loved, and that is what we're called to do. Coming up next, you will find out about the popularity of the Hallmark TV series, When Calls the Heart. Brian will tell all about the Hardys and who they are. Uplift TV is excited to feature Brian Bird, writer and producer of the popular Hallmark TV series, When Calls the Heart. In celebration of Christmas, Brian Bird and Michelle Cox have written a new devotional book titled When God Calls the Heart at Christmas, featuring 25 devotions of God moments from the TV series and includes favorite holiday recipes and various stories contributed by the Hardys, the beloved fans of the show. There is also a matching keepsake journal filled with inspirational Christmas ideas to inspire you to write precious Christmas memories of your family. These two embossed hardcover books are yours for a donation of $35. In addition, there are two bonus gifts that include the original devotional book written by Brian Bird, titled When God Calls the Heart, featuring 40 devotions from Hope Valley that covers the whole year. There is also a matching companion journal to inspire you to record your memories throughout the year. For a donation of $65, you can have all four books, including When God Calls the Heart at Christmas and When God Calls the Heart, along with both matching journals. These books are also great Christmas gifts to order for your loved ones. Call 844-7-UPLIFT. That's 844-787-5438. Or order online at upliftoffer.com. Free shipping is included. Order now at 844-787-5438 or upliftoffer.com. Welcome back to Uplifting People. Our guest today is Brian Bird. He is the co-creator and executive producer of When Calls the Heart. Welcome, Brian. Thanks, Tony. So, When Calls the Heart, uh, tell me how did you get uh, involved in this series? Well, back about eight years ago, my, uh, my partner, Michael Landon Jr. and I found this book series by uh, Jeanette Oak. Okay. And Jeanette is, is in the faith space, at least, ro romantic uh, faith fiction. Uh, is probably the queen mother of, of that category, and she wrote this series of books. And 
we thought, you know, this it's period, it's set in 1910, mm -hmm. you know, that, that time period, a coal mining town, a wealthy teacher who comes uh, west from her wealthy family right. in the east um, because she has a passion for teaching. She comes to this sort of hard scrabble coal mining town mm -hmm. that's had a big coal mine disaster and, and lost a lot of the men in the town. And so this sort of a town full of, uh, of, of widows and, yeah. and, and, and fatherless kids, right. right? And she comes to teach school here and falls in love with a handsome Mountie mm -hmm. who's sent there to protect her in his red serge jacket. And that's really the sort of the premise of the show. But Jeanette wrote these books with so much faith mm -hmm. and family themes that we said, you know, that all needs to be on television yes. because people are hungry for that kind of Absolutely. content again. I did a show called Touched by an Angel. Mm -hmm. Michael's dad, of course, was behind Little House on the Prairie right. and Highway to Heaven. And, and so we wanted to sort of uh, reboot that faith and family legacy on TV and the Hallmark Channel opened its doors to us. And When Calls the Heart is now prepping its sixth season. Amazing. Right? Your and first se your first week, you had 3.6 million viewers. That's right. Yeah. It's just, it, it, it's blowing up. Yeah. Not because we're geniuses, mm -hmm. but because people are starved for this Absolutely. kind of content. You know, in the age of zombies and vampires yes. and crystal meth dealers, you know, mm -hmm. everywhere else and dead body shows, mm -hmm. our show is about hope, faith, and love. Amazing. Right? And our little town of Hope Valley, people tell us, we want to go live there. We wish we could <laughs> live there, yes. right? Um, we have uh, an amazing fan base mm -hmm. group that has, is very organic, grassroots. Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't invent them. They invented themselves. They call themselves Hardies, like her, her, Hardies, Hardies, like Trekkies. Okay, but when calls the heart, heart Hardies, Hardies, Hardies. And they're very involved in social media. Oh, yeah. they they trend uh, for us every week that the show is yes. on nationally mm -hmm. on Twitter and on Facebook, and it's 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 there's at least half a million that we know about wow. out there who identify themselves yes. that way, and um, you know, in the age of uh, uh, 500 television shows mm -hmm. on TV, it's really hard to find an audience. Yes. It's hard to get your, your message out there because there's so much noise. Well, the Hardys are our marketing mm -hmm. department. You know, they've volunteered to become sort of the Hardys army yes. and, and help us to promote the show and to share the vision of the show with their friends and their neighbors. And so it's just been a, a complete blessing. And again, not because we're the smartest guys in the world, but we just happened to get come in at a really good time yes. when nobody else was making this kind right, of you, content. And you filled this niche that is so needed. That's right. Uh, faith, uh, family, family friendly films. Ab absolutely. Um, the themes in, in, in the show are Christian, but they're not overtly preachy, let's say. Yeah, you know what? I, I really don't believe in hammering people over the head mm -hmm. with the gospel, mm -hmm. right? But the great virtues in the Bible, you know, all honestly, all really good media out there invokes those great virtues right. that come right out of Scripture. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the, the, the Proverbs, all the great Proverbs and all the great sort of rules for living, guidelines yes. for living that come right out of Scripture. You know what? We invoke those. We yes. regularly quote Scripture on When Calls a Heart, but we don't pound people over the head with it. So good. We just try to stir up soul cravings, Yeah. right? That's the best use of television and film, in my, in my opinion, is not to be directly pounding people over the head or trying to evangelize people, but to stir up cravings mm -hmm. in their hearts, mm -hmm. right? Get them asking questions about their own souls, right. uh, about where they exist sort of in the, in the, in the light of the universe and, and, and under God's umbrella. Right. And drive those heart cravings into real conversation like we're talking, yes. right? Because that's where the most precious cargo needs to be handed over. So good, yes. Between people, yes. flesh and blood. Not a picture on a wall, mm -hmm. right? I, I frankly think that evangelical films or evangelistic films and television are neither good film or good evangelism. Mm -hmm. Because honestly, it's like handing somebody a tract and right. saying, here, go ahead and read that, right? right? 
I would rather talk about it. Yes. I would rather, my pastor for 20 years was Rick Warren. Yes. And he said, Brian, if all you do is ask great questions mm -hmm. and stir up soul cravings, you drive people to my door. That's it. I'll take them the rest yeah. of the way. Yes. Right? And so art is, is best used when it's just stirring up questions Absolutely. and stirring up hunger. Another project that you worked on was The Case for Christ. You know, Case for Christ is a, a world famous best selling book by Lee Strobel, mm -hmm. uh, uh, which does a deep dive into all the greatest evidence. Uh, for the faith, but mm -hmm. you know what it really started out was, as was Lee as this hardcore atheist journalist from the Chicago Tribune whose wife had become a Christian mm -hmm. and kind of blew up his marriage. And he wanted to do a deep dive into Christianity to, in order to debunk the faith, wow. right? And so that's what all that research started out as. But at the end of the day, he real, realized there was so much evidence there for, for faith, that it would take more faith to remain an atheist. And so he embraced Christianity along with his wife. But the movie became a, an incredible love story mm -hmm. between Lee and Leslie. And I think that's why people loved it so much. And um, I'm happy to say that we're now looking at making a sequel called The Case for Miracles. Amazing based on Lee's brand new book that Amazing. just came out. So. Incredible, thank you, Brian. Coming up next, we will learn about Brian's new devotional, When God Calls the Heart. Uplift TV is featuring Brian Bird, writer and producer of the TV series, When Calls the Heart. Brian has written a new devotional book, When God Calls the Heart at Christmas. There's also a matching journal to record your Christmas memories. These two books are yours for a donation of $35. In addition, there are two bonus books that include the original, When God Calls the Heart, and the matching journal. For a donation of $65, you'll receive all four books. Call 844-787-5438 or online at upliftoffer.com. Welcome back to Uplifting People. Our guest is Brian Bird, co-creator and executive producer of When Calls the Heart. Brian, you have a brand new devotional book and it's called When God Calls the Heart. Right. Tell me a little bit about the book. Well, you know, we, um, we, we get so many um, of the Hardys mm -hmm. who tell us we, we love the Hardys. They, they, <laughs> yeah, we love the Hardys. They love the show. And they, they said to me uh, for years now, we wish we could go deeper with each of the episodes because there are God moments, mm -hmm. right, that we, that we include in the storytelling. In the previous segment, you talked about those soul cravings that you that's brought right. out. Yeah. That's right, those There's soul an cravings. And so uh, I had heard that so many times that I talked to my friend Michelle uh, Cox, mm -hmm. who co-authored this devotional with me at a writer's conference one time. Okay. And, and I said, um, you know, people want to go deeper in the conversation. And she said, well, what about a devotional based on the show, When Calls the Heart? Amazing. And we'll add the word God to it. And what we essentially do in this first devotional is we have 40 chapters and they're l loosely based on 40 episodes of the show, so I think it might be the only devotional out there that is actually based on a TV show. Wow. Um, but we, we go deeper with those God moments in the show, and then we sort of spin into some good spiritual, you know, devotional content. We, we provide a, a scripture verse, we provide questions for reflection, and a prayer. Amazing. Even. And the Hardys are loving this <laughs> book. So good. And, and it has a, de, a journal which accompanies it. And um, I'm just so thrilled. Uh, it's my first book ever. I've been making film and TV shows for 30 years, but it is now my first published book. And I just couldn't be happier because it, what it's providing mm -hmm. for, is whole families are now able to sit and right. have teachable moments. So they can watch a show and then... Exactly right. They watch an episode, then they the get book. the devotional out, and they can, and they can talk more deeply yeah. with their kids about some of these important principles. Or even some small, small groups at and small, yeah. Absolutely, small groups are using it. You know, we even heard about one chemotherapy group, Okay. right? While they're, these ladies are getting their chemo, yes. right? They're going through the devotions together. That does my heart so much good and, and blessing because it's, it's, it's everything that I could have asked for, mm. um, for this to be enriching lives out there. There's even some Twitter uh, groups that are doing the devotions together on Twitter okay. where they're asking, they're going through devotion and asking questions of, of one another. They gather on Sundays and do this. And so it's just been a, a, a real blessing and I'm so thrilled with the book. And 
We also have the second book coming out for this Christmas called When God Calls the Heart at Christmas. Okay. And it's de also devotions from Hope Valley, but it's Christmas themed, mm. all of those 25 chapters. So you know what, We're, we are, um, we are taking the, the world and the, uh, and the themes and the life and the f hope and faith from When Calls the Heart, the mm -hmm. TV show, and we're, we're, we're building on that for people in their own homes as they, as they can go through these devotions. So you mentioned When God Calls the Heart at Christmas. Tell me about that devotional. Well, the, the first book, When God Calls the Heart, Devotions from Hope Valley, um, was, was so beautifully received yeah. by the Hardys that we talked with our publisher, Broad Street, about what if we did a Christmas devotional because uh, it, it, there's just so much hunger out there for this content. We have made on One Calls the Heart four Christmas movies, well, wow. right? And we thought, okay, well, Let's use those as a jumping off point for a brand new devotional called When God Calls the Heart mm -hmm. at Christmas. And it's brand new material. It's 25 chapters for the Advent, yes. right, for folks. But what we also did, which I'm so excited about, is we solicited from the Hardys Christmas stories, Christmas traditions, and Christmas recipes. Or, and you brought them in and the book. And we've included in the many of the Hardy's contributions to the brand new devotional. That's so, so good. Uh, it, it's, it becomes more of a keepsake. So right. there's uh, When God Calls the Heart at Christmas is a devotional itself, and then there's a keepsake journal as part of that, right? Mm -hmm. And so it becomes more of, of something that families can can use, right, right at Christmas time, and then keep in their in their memorabilia and go back and look at, at some of the things that they contributed to their journal. Yeah. And um, I, I'm thrilled about that because first of all, the Hardys um, are, are the, they're the straw that stirs the coffee. Absolutely. <laughs> right, <laughs> For, uh, on When Calls the Heart. And uh, so I was so thrilled to be able to, to, to reach out to them and say, send us your best recipes, yeah. send us your best Christmas stories and your best traditions and we'll include them in the brand new devotional. Amazing. You know, Christmas is a natural time for family to yeah. get together. So not only can they get together and, but, and, and just talk about different things, but they can go over when God calls the heart of Christmas Well, we as know, a family. yes, exactly. And we know that Christmas is such an important uh, part of tradition, right. not only for families, but for TV viewers, because yes. more than five and a half million people watched our last mm -hmm. Christmas movie on Christmas night. Yeah. And there's another one coming for season six. Uh, and we, so we just know that people are hungry for family, for, for food, yes. for faith and yes. tradition uh, at Christmas time. Everyone loves the Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh, <laughs> They start early in the year. That's Everybody right. Everybody wants to watch them. Yes. That's right. It's it's wall-to-wall -wall Christmas yes. uh, for about, a, about two months mm -hmm. on the Hallmark Channel. And we're, we're honored and thrilled to, to, to be part of that, that big package of, of Christmas movies. Um, but completely blessed and gratified to be able to offer up when God calls the heart at Christmas as a Christmas devotional for people to be able to share together. Give me an example of one snippet of, of one chapter. Well, one of, the, um, one of the stories that I tell in one of our Christmas chapters mm -hmm. in the new devotional is the story of my grandfather, Richard Benson. And he was a handyman. He was an everyman. He worked on dams and bridges and buildings and, and he could build just about anything. But he was at our house one day and he was, I, I, I woke up and I heard humming. Mm -hmm. And I heard him humming a Christmas song, but it wasn't Christmas. He was shaving. Okay. And so I walked in, I was a little kid, I walked in and I said, Grandpa, how come you're, how come you're shaving? I mean, how come you're singing a Christmas mm -hmm. song? It's not even Christmas. And he said, Brian, every day is Christmas. So good. And so I included my little memory of my grandfather and that tradition that he shared with me as, as part of one of the stories in, in the new devotional. And um, just for me, um, being able to go back and to illustrate the important principles right out of scripture for people to be able to, to, to share with their own kids and their own families at Christmas time, that's like Christmas for me. Yes. That's like the best gift I could ever ask for. Coming up next, Brian Bird will tell us about one of his most uplifting moments. Uplift TV is excited to feature Brian Bird, writer and producer of the popular Hallmark TV series, Wind Calls the Heart. 
Brian has written a new devotional book titled When God Calls the Heart at Christmas, featuring 25 God moments from the TV series, along with inspirational stories from the Hardy fans. There is also a matching keepsake journal that allows you to journal your own Christmas memories. These two embossed hardcover books are yours for a donation of $35. In addition, there are two bonus books that include the original devotional book written by Brian Bird, titled When God Calls the Heart, featuring 40 devotions from Hope Valley that covers the whole year. There is also a matching companion journal to inspire you to record your memories throughout the year. For a donation of $65, you can have all four books, including When God Calls the Heart at Christmas and When God Calls the Heart, along with both matching journals. Call 844-7-UPLIFT. That's 844-787-5438. Or order online at upliftoffer.com. Welcome back to Uplifting People. Brian, share with us one of your most uplifting moments. Well, Tony, back in 1984, I had an opportunity to get my first cup of coffee, I guess you would say, in the big leagues of, of, of the, the media business. Mm -hmm. I had an opportunity to write an episode of the old show, which you're too young to even <laughs> remember, called Fantasy Island, Okay. right? And it was a big hit on ABC, and it was my first produced teleplay for, for television, 20 million people watched it. And then three episodes after my, my episode aired, the show ended, it got canceled. And I thought, okay, well, I guess I've had my one cup of coffee in the big leagues, mm -hmm. and I continued to work on my journalism for the next uh, you know, several years. But in 1988, mm -hmm. four years after my one episode of Fantasy Island was on the air, I was in Ethiopia covering the big famine there mm -hmm. for a magazine story. And I was flipping around the TV of the, the hotel there in Addis Ababa, and guess what I see? Not only the show Fantasy Island, but my episode of Fantasy Island with Amharic subtitles. And I had gotten some perspective in the, previ in the previous four years, right? Uh, it, it, was, it was a fine show, but it wasn't like earth shaking. It wasn't gonna change the universe. But yet when I saw that my show was being exported all over the globe, it was a crystal moment for me. And I got down on my hands and knees and I said, God, if you want me back in this game, open the door. And a year later, I was on my first television show as a staff writer, and that was 1989. And I haven't looked back ever since. And 10 years later, our show Touched by an Angel was in 85 countries all over the, the globe. Um, Netflix has taken out When Calls the Heart into 30 countries this year. So I think that epiphany, that crystal moment, that uplifting moment that I had right there in, in Ethiopia set a precedent for me that, will, that changed my life, that changed the course, or course of my future. Amazing. Brian, thank you so much for sharing with us. Your life story has been so inspiring. The TV series is When Calls the Heart, the devotion When God Calls the Heart, and the latest Christmas devotional, When God Calls the Heart at Christmas. Thank you for being with us, Brian. Thanks, Tony. It's been a pleasure.